Hi, my name is Dr. Robbie Kendall Melton. I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor of the Tennessee Board of Region. I oversee 50 campuses of your technical centers, your community colleges, and your universities. And yes, we have a partnership with our K-12 schools. And I'm here because I oversee e-learning with the Tennessee State. And what I have in my hands are two tools that your campus will have if you're going to use e-learning. I have my laptop, and right now that's the number one device in terms of using a tool for online teaching and learning. However, guess what? We all have a mobile device. In the future, students will pull out their phones to take a course online. With that, my job is to make sure we have quality standards for online teaching and learning. Again, the same rigor, the same guidelines, the same type of evaluations that we have on ground to ensure quality programs, we must have them with these tools. Part of our goal is to make sure that we offer quality programs and courses around the globe for teaching and learning. First of all, let me just say for the entire world, we're going to have many changes in technology tools. These are tools just like the pencil, the paper. Again, teaching is teaching. So regardless of the technology, no technology, you still must have good teaching principles, best practices, because the same things that happen on ground, the same of online. A lot of people get confused because they think, oh my gosh, must have this, must have that. No, let me put this behind and say, hello, we're talking about teaching and learning. So with that, we use the same principle. You must engage the students. You must have creativity. You must have motivation. You must have evaluation. Again, nothing changes when these things starts to change. We are teachers. Look at my face. Here we go. The number one is not the technology. It's not the content. It's not the training, attitude, change in attitude. You have to remember, in education, we are used to the same thing over and over. All of your other professions have changed. If you look at medicine, they don't use the same tools as even 10 years ago. But in education, we want to hold on. We have to let go and look at preparing our students for a technological environment. However, there's good tech and there's bad tech. We're the educators. We have to help shape that. So again, when I look at all of this and I hear what are the challenges, it's called an attitude. We have to be willing to look at it, try it, evaluate it, and apply it to best principles. Okay, and this is according to Robbie, okay? We have to go back to kindergarten and learn how to share and play in the sandbox. And if you are awarded for the best sand castle, life is good. Sometimes when we think something is free and open that there must be some strings attached or someone's going to get credit for creating something that maybe they did or didn't, whatever. As I shared with you, I'm an educator. I share everything. I give credit where credit is due, but if I have something, life is good, you can have it. We have to learn how to share, and that's a skill. It's not learned. Of course, we would like to have a transformation. However, some institutions are under the gun because they have no more students. Let me say that one more time. They don't have any students because they didn't keep up with the changes in society. And that's not just with these technology tools. It's like offering programs that will prepare them for the future. So all of that to say, I believe you ease into it. And how do you do that? 
Well, guess what? Here it is right here. This is one of the most powerful tools, and it's called a cell phone. And as I shared, most people are playing Candy Crush or games with it. If they realize what this tool can do, and take them from their tool. So when I work with faculty and administrators, I bring them all in. And just like today, I say, let me see your phones. Let me see your mobile devices. Because they're used to this, they're comfortable with this. So I take them from where they are and show them the possibilities and then bring in strategic planning. So if you want to have quality online, you must have a strategic plan built with evaluation. It has to be a strategic plan of all stakeholders. Everyone must be at the table. You can't put a program online without the administration, the leadership, the community, student services, even your grounds. And people tend to forget that. They think, wow, I want to put a program online. All I have to do is offer classes. No, that is not quality. So again, you really need a team approach. When I come out, I always ask for the team. And again, I evaluate many programs around the world. And I bring to them lessons learned because the bottom line is students. So I would like to say attitude. Let me make a comment. Number one, here's our goal. If it can connect to the internet, not all the time, you can have a quality program. Let me clarify that. In Ethiopia, again, they didn't have all of the infrastructure, but they had a good attitude. So what they were able to do is use the Internet Cafe. They would go to the Internet Cafe once a week, download the information, and go back to the campus and share. Many people think everyone must have a device. You can take your old technology. In fact, as long as you can hook up, you don't have to have the latest or the greatest. You can have the old and the tired and still have quality program, especially with these laptops. So again, we're able to help educators to look at education as a spectrum. Yes, you might have your latest, but we always take the old and use what we have for distance education. Here is a free resource for the entire world. It's called Merlot, M-E-R-L-O-T. It's an open source resource with learning objects already reviewed by faculty members from around the world. So that's merlot.org. It's open, it's free, and let me just give you a teachable moment. Let's say you need to have an online or an on-ground lesson for the Vikings. Where would you go? You go to Merlot. Why? Because it's already been reviewed. It has your learning outcomes and objectives, and you're able to click, and it brings up that entire program. It's free, and a lot of educators aren't aware of that. And I always refer people there because we have to learn to share. I also have a website called Appopedia, and I didn't share that this morning, where we have curated over 70,000 apps by discipline, and we have over 125 from preschool all the way to PhD in your careers, and by devices. My goal is to have apps for educators where they don't have to search. And when I find a new app, I'm your new appologist, okay? That's my new title. Then it will automatically come to you. Can you just imagine a world where you wouldn't have to hunt for apps? It will come to you and help you to use it for teaching and learning. Wow.